Hello and welcome to this tutorial on making a user track without using Bound and Box at all for the creation of the user track. This particular video will focus on making the user track in Pro Tools, though the principle can be applied to any digital audio workstation or DAW. And the user track can be made entirely in Pro Tools without requiring Bound in a Box or Real Band, and then the resulting user track can then be shared or even sold to Bound in a Box users, and it will then work for them. Before we start though, I'll just explain a little bit about Band in a Box and explain just what user tracks are. Band in a Box is an auto accompaniment program that lets you create backing tracks for any song in any style, just by typing in the chords, picking from over a thousand possible styles, setting the tempo and pressing play. You can enter any song in any key, whether it's a popular song you want to learn, or your own song, or just repeating patterns that you want to practice over. A typical song can be entered in less than two minutes, and the great thing about Band in a Box is that it uses real tracks, which are audio recordings of real musicians. Even the soloist you're hearing right now is a real track, which means all we did was enter this chord progression and Band in a Box generated this solo. And this can be done over any progression in any key. And now, new with Band in a Box 2014, we've added user tracks. These are like real tracks, but you, the user, can create your own. You simply record your own instrument, and Band in a Box can then use that over any chord progression in Band in a Box, just like the real tracks. And with this track, that's exactly what I've done. I created this electric guitar user track myself in under 10 minutes, and the actual making of the user track was done entirely in Pro Tools, without involving Band in a Box at all. There are many great ways that you can benefit from user tracks creation, like this. You can use your own user tracks as songwriting tools, playing your own grooves, but being instantly able to change the chord progressions, keys, tempos, etc. as you write. You can share or trade them with other Band in a Box or Real Band users using the pgmusic.com forum. You can sell user tracks as a third-party product that can be used in Band in a Box or Real Band by customers. So, now I'm going to go back in time a bit and show you exactly how I made this guitar user track. So, I'm about to make an electric guitar user track, and the steps of making user tracks include 1. Download our 1 minute user tracks template. 2. Pick the style and tempo you want to record at and give your user track a name. 3. Playing and recording your instrument playing over a short, simple chord chart. 4. Save your file in the correct location and format. Create a memo. 5. Share your completed user track with the world. So step 1 is to download our 1 minute user tracks template. The templates can be downloaded from www pgmusic.com forward slash user tracks one dot htm at the how to make user tracks without using band in a box or real band section. You can see that for pop user tracks there are two options. Either will work but you can see the second one says includes audio tracks. The first one is a smaller download but only contains MIDI files to record along with. The second one is larger and contains everything that the first one contains but also contains some audio tracks with drum and bass which means you can have the option of recording while hearing real musicians, as opposed to MIDI tracks, which is much more pleasant. So, I'll download the one with audio tracks. Step two is to pick the style and tempo you want to record at. If you're going through these steps, chances are good you have a groove in mind that you're interested in recording. For me, I had a medium rock groove in mind, something like this. I used an app on my phone to figure out the tempo, which is around 115 to 125 beats per minute. One important thing to note is that if you're following the method of making user tracks without Band in a Box, the tempo must be a multiple of 5, and must be between 50 and 300 beats per minute. It will work for Band in a Box end users at any tempo, but the recording has to follow these guidelines. So, I'll pick 120 beats per minute for my style. Also part of the step is to name the style, and to do that, Simply make a folder and name it with the name of your style. You can name it however you want. 
but the naming convention we generally use with real tracks and user tracks is the instrument name, guitar, electric, followed by the type, rhythm, finger picking, strumming, etc. So I'll type rhythm, then a descriptive name, rock distorted Jareth, since that's my name, EV120, which means even eighths at 120 beats per minute. So now I can look through the zip file and see if I can find some backing tracks that I can use for this recording. I'll look in the MIDI folder first. So I'm doing a rock groove at 120. These MIDI files have suggested tempo ranges that they'll work well in. So for example, this one, 60s pop swing, would be in my tempo range, but it's a swing eighth style, so that wouldn't work. This heavy rock style might work, or possibly this modern rock one. So I'll keep both of those in mind. We picked the template zip file that also contained audio tracks. So let's check out some of those. Now with MIDI, they'll work at whatever tempo you set for your song, but with audio, it's a little bit different. If you're familiar with stretching audio to different tempos, by all means feel free to do that. But for this tutorial, we'll just use the audio as it is. So if we want audio backing tracks to play with right now, we have to pick from this list, but luckily there's lots to choose from here. So I'll check out this Rock 120 style. So you can hear it has drums and bass, which will be perfect for backing up the style I'm playing. So, step three is to play and record your instrument playing over a short, simple chord chart. For the chord chart, simply open and print the PDF that's in the zip file. You can see that it contains major chords, minor chords, and dominant seventh chords. And it's in the key of C for eight bars, then E for eight bars, then G, then A. And all of the backing tracks in this zip file whether they're MIDI or audio, follow this chart. So I'll open Pro Tools and start a blank session, which I'll call User Tracks Recording. So now there are three ways you can approach the recording. We checked out the backing tracks earlier, but you don't even actually need to have backing tracks. If you just record to a click track and follow the chord progression, that's really all you need to do. One thing to remember is to leave two bars of silence at the beginning though, which is treated by Band in a Box as a two bar count in. So, bar 3 in Pro Tools actually corresponds to bar 1 in the PDF chart, but apart from that, if you just follow the chord chart, this will work just fine. The next option is to use a MIDI file. When we looked earlier, we saw that this heavy rock MIDI file might work, so it can be loaded into Pro Tools. But that sounds a little cheesy, and I think it might be a little more inspiring to play with real instruments, so I'll instead load in the Rock 120 file. And I'll play a little bit of that. So now I'll make a new track for recording. I'll arm it for recording. Now, if I was recording into a microphone, I would want to wear headphones to make sure the backing tracks don't bleed into the mic. You want the resulting recording to only have your instrument in it. If, like I'm doing here, you are plugged directly in, you don't have to worry about that. So, I'll start recording.
So the recording is finished. If I wanted to go back and fix certain parts, if I wasn't happy with some of the bars, I could highlight the region I want to fix and punch in. But I'll keep what I've got here for now. Step 4 is to save your file in the correct location and format and create a memo. I'll solo the guitar I just recorded and play a little bit back. I'll highlight the whole region and go to File, Bounce to Disk. This will save my track as an audio file. I'll save it as a stereo file. User tracks work with stereo or mono audio files, but I'll pick stereo here. It needs to be 16-bit at 44.1 kHz. And I'll press Bounce. Now, I want to save this in the folder that I created, the folder that is named from the user tracks name. And the name of this file can be anything, so I'll call it Guitar Pop Song 1. It takes a short time to render it. And now you can see this file is here. Now there are two additional files that need to go here as well, and they can both be taken from the original zip file that we downloaded. First of all, we need a corresponding band in a box file. So I'll go into the band in a box song files multiple tempos folder. Now we recorded our user track at 120 beats per minute. So I'll go through the list and find the one that has 120 beside it. As I mentioned before, when making user tracks without band in a box, you need to record at tempos that are multiples of five. And this is why, because these are the band in a box files available to you. So I copy the one that has 120 beside it. And I paste it in the folder along with the audio that I just rendered. Now I said that the file name for this wave could be anything, which is true, but the wave file and the corresponding band in a box song have to have the same name. So I'll rename the Band in a Box song to Guitar Pop Song 1. The last thing that needs to go here is the memo. I'll go back to the files from the zip and you can see the file memo.txt. I'll also copy that to my user track folder. This file can then be edited and you can write a little bit about the user track, which I'll do here. And that's it! you're now ready to share this user track with the world. The best way to do this is to archive this entire folder. There are many ways to share this with the world, including Dropbox. So for example, if I put this zip that I just made into my Dropbox folder, I can copy a public link to my clipboard and make it available online, for example, at the PG Music forums. So you saw, everything we did in making that user track was done without the need of Band in a Box. But for end users to be able to use your user track, they do need Band in a Box or Real Band. So this part of the video will now be from the user's perspective. A Band in a Box forum user would see your post in the forum and would be able to download your zip and extract it to their user tracks folder by default C, BB, real tracks, user tracks, but could be in a different location if they installed Band in a Box somewhere else. And for the end user, that's all they have to do. The user track should now work for them. So I'll go into Band in a Box and I'll type in a quick chord progression. As you recall, the user tracks were recorded in the keys of C, E, G, and A. But you can enter chords in any key, so I'm entering a song here in C sharp. I'll use the quick style picker to pick a rock style. And this one is even eighths, and works well between 110 and 140 beats per minute, so that will likely be a good one. You can see over in the mixer that this one has bass, drums, and two electric guitars, so I'll replace one of these with the new user track. The user track now automatically shows up here, simply from having put that folder in the correct place, and the memo I wrote appears here. So I'll pick the user track. And we now have this guitar groove playing over our completely different chord progression. And even though the source was recorded at 120 beats per minute, we're not limited to using the user track at that tempo. Here it is at 112. And here it is at 132.
And the really fun part comes when you mix and match. There are hundreds and hundreds of real tracks available in Band in a Box, so you can try different combinations of basses, drums, guitars, keyboards, and lots of other instruments. Now, as we saw earlier, this one minute template only contains major, minor, and dominant seventh chords. If you enter other chord types, Band in a Box finds the best substitute and plays that instead. In most cases, this is fine. For example, if you enter a minor 11th chord, it will just substitute a minor chord, and there are no conflicting notes. If you enter a diminished chord, it will also substitute a minor chord, and with that one there are conflicting notes. You can always record more material to make these chords work correctly, using one of our more advanced templates. The great thing is, if you've already made the style, and you want to add more material to it, you don't need to redo what you've already done. Just add more audio and band in a box files to the same folder. You can add as much material as you want here, and all the material in this folder will automatically be part of the user track. You'll be amazed at how quickly you can get your own user track working in Band in a Box with this simple method that I've shown you. And once you have user tracks, you can share them with your friends, just by giving them the user tracks folder you made, or you can share them with the world online, or at our user tracks forums, or sell them as third party product. For more information on making user tracks, you can go to www.pgmusic.com forward slash user tracks onehtm There are more template options here, as well as further tutorials for more advanced user tracks creation. For more information in general about Band in a Box, visit www.pgmusic.com or www.bandinabox.com. Have fun! 